Hello, YouTubers. I built this device to count laps while swimming. It is a fun little project that uses an STM32F103 development board to drive two seven-segment number modules and a buzzer. It uses a vibration switch so that every time the device feels a bump, the count increments by one. I also included a switch that causes the device to count by increments of two instead of one. Some people might think that is a silly feature, but this switch could be reprogrammed to do other things like muting the buzzer, resetting the counter, or changing the delay time between counts. I needed to be able to reset the counter underwater, so I programmed the device to go back to zero if you tap it five times within 10 seconds. Next, I will show all the supplies that I needed for this project. The following items can be purchased from various online sources. This is the STM32F103C8T6 development board. I used common anode 1-bit 7-segment displays. This is a USB to TTL serial converter adapter module. This is the vibration switch that I used. This is the buzzer, or beeper, that I used. I used two single-pole, dual-throw slide switches. I used three NPN signal transistors. In this case, it's a BC547B transistor. I used some female pin headers. This is the battery holder that I used. Now, Later in this video, you are going to see that I use a breadboard to test all of the components. While using the breadboard, I used axial resistors. But for the printed circuit board, I used surface mount resistors. I used quarter watt axial through hole resistors for tests that were performed on the breadboard. I used seven 100 ohm resistors for the digital display, and I used a 10K pull down resistor for the switch that changes the counting mode. On the PCB version of the circuit, I used 1206 quarter watt surface mount resistors instead of the through hole resistors. If you need axial or surface mount resistors, just buy a variety pack like one of these. For this project, you will need a breadboard, some wires, and LEDs. An electronics kit like this will provide everything you need. You will also need a soldering iron and solder. If you don't have those things, once again, you can buy a soldering kit. A cheap one is fine for this kind of work. Of course, it is always helpful to have a digital voltmeter to check various components and circuit connections. Because I wanted to use this device in a swimming pool, I bought a waterproof Pelican case number 1010. In order to make the device look nice and to make it fit inside the Pelican case, I designed a printed circuit board. I used Express PCB to design and fabricate the PCB. This tutorial is not going to show how to use Express PCB, but even novices can probably figure out how to use the free tools on the Express PCB website. I will put the .pcb file in a Google folder so others can use it to order a PCB like mine. But you do not need to design or buy a PCB to do this project. Everything can be done on a breadboard, and you'll probably have a hairy mess at the end, something like this. There is a good chance that your STM32 development board will be delivered without the header pins installed. So the first thing to be done is to solder the header pins onto the board. There, all the pins are soldered. Look very closely at all of the pins and make sure there are no solder bridges or cold solder joints. Just to let you know, the STM32 development board is also known as the blue pill. 
In this video, I might refer to it as the blue pill, and I don't want that terminology to confuse anyone. Okay, so next we will wire up the STM32 and connect it to a USB to TTL converter. This will allow us to check the operation of the STM32, and we will confirm that we can update the firmware on the STM32 board. For this project, we are going to use the USB to TTL converter to power the blue pill. My converter has two possible voltage settings, 5 volts and 3.3 volts. For the way we are going to wire this board, it is very, very important that we set the output voltage of the converter to 3.3 volts. Assuming you have a converter that is similar to mine, the output voltage is set using this jumper. So this is how we'll set up the USB to TTL converter and connect it to the blue pill. VCC, we have it set to 3.3 volts, and that gets connected to the 3.3 volt input on the blue pill. Ground gets connected to ground. TX gets connected to A10, and RX gets connected to A9. Next, we'll do this on the breadboard. In order to program the STM32, we need an Integrated Development Environment, or IDE. Probably the most commonly used IDE in the maker or do-it-yourself space is the Arduino IDE. The Arduino IDE is free, though you can make a donation if you want, and there are literally thousands of code examples and libraries written for the Arduino IDE. So that is the programming application that we will use. Go ahead, download it, and install it. It should only take one or two minutes. Go ahead and open the Arduino IDE. Go to Tools, Board, and in this list, you'll see all of the boards that the Arduino IDE is set up to interface with. In here, you can see that the STM32 is not listed, so we need to do a couple things. Go to Boards Manager, and in here, you'll see there's the 32 bits ARM Cortex-M3. You need to have it installed. If your uh, version of Arduino IDE does not have it installed, click the, there'll be an install button here that you click on. You can see mine already has it installed, so I don't need to do that. So after you've done that, close the Arduino IDE, and then search for uh, GitHub Arduino STM32. That will take you to the GitHub, and uh, you'll have this add-on that uh, will be needed for the Arduino IDE. Uh, click to download it. Download zip. Uh, just save file. So let the download continue. After the download is complete, grab the master file, copy it, and then go to C Program Files Arduino Hardware and paste the master file into the hardware folder.
Next, open the Arduino IDE again. Go to Tools, Board, and now you should see this generic STM32F103C series. Select that one. Now go to Variant and choose the 64K flash and go to Tools Upload Method Serial and CPU Speed to 72. Next, we want to make sure that the USB to TTL converter is working correctly. So go to your device manager. If you're using a Windows machine, then use go to device manager. Open up ports, com, and you'll see the list of communication ports uh, that you have. And when you plug in the USB to TTL converter, you should see it appear in your list of COM ports. Note the COM number. COM5 is what uh, my computer is showing. On your computer, it's probably going to be something different. So go to the Arduino IDE. Go to Tools and Port. You should see the same COM port available that you just saw appear in your device manager, COM5 uh, for, for this case. If you don't see your serial port show up as expected, it could be that you're missing a driver uh, for the USB to TTL converter, and you can find the drivers sometimes uh, in the uh, Arduino folder. Arduino, drivers, FTDI, you may, have, you, you may have the driver available here. So now we have the Arduino IDE installed. We have the STM32 add-on installed, and we have the circuit all wired up. Now, I'm gonna plug that in. You should see this uh, first LED um, li lighting up, and you may see this light blinking. This is shows that the manufacturer of this board installed a blink program in order to just confirm its operation. So depending on where you get your blue pill from, you may or may not see this green light or this LED blinking, but you should see the power LED on. So now that we have everything uh, ready to go, we can program this thing. So within the Arduino IDE, go to File, Examples, you should see STM32 examples, digital, and select blink. So here's a sketch. A sketch is what they call a, a program uh, in the Arduino world. And uh, in this sketch, we're going to change the blink frequency of that little green LED on the STM32 board. Now, the way the sketch is currently written, the output is incorrectly uh, specified as PB1. We want to change that to PC13. PC13 is the pin output that controls that little green LED on the blue pill. We're also going to change the frequency of the blinking. We're going to have the little green LED turn on for two seconds or 2000 milliseconds, and we'll have the little green LED turn off for 500 milliseconds. So when you're getting ready to program the STM32, you have to move this jumper to that position and then press the reset button. And you should do that with the power on. Now, within the Arduino IDE, go to uh, verify. This will just check 
your code, compiling sketch. So there's no errors, that's good. And now we can upload. And you can see this little light blinking. It says that it's running code. And here we see execution is done. Done uploading. Now, go back to your board, move this jumper out of its programming position and back into the run position and hit reset. And now you can see the, the green light is blinking. Oh, <laughs> what's uh, I guess funny is that uh, I actually have it turning off for two seconds and turning on for half a second or 500 milliseconds. I got that information flipped around on my code. But you can see we, that we've changed the frequency of that LED. Woohoo! We programmed our STM32. Awesome! So the next thing we're going to do is connect this LED to the blue pill and just make it blink. Now, what I have connected here is an LED connected to 3.3 volts along here through a 100 ohm resistor. And then when I connect this to ground, I can complete the circuit and the LED turns on. So just a quick review of how LEDs work. This is a typical LED. The LED will have a long leg and a short leg, and the long leg is the anode, and this is where we connect the positive voltage. In this case, we're using 3.3 volts, and the short leg is the negative side of the LED, and we will connect that through a resistor to ground. So why did I use a 100 ohm resistor in this circuit? Well, let's take a look at Ohm's law, which is voltage equals current times resistance. Now, LEDs uh, such as this typically take about 20 milliamps or 0.02 amps, and they typically have a voltage drop of one to two volts across them. So uh, about one point, I'll just say 1.5 volts drop across this LED, which would put the voltage at this point at 1.8 volts. So, if we get 1.8 volts and 0.02 uh, as our current times resistance, do a little bit of algebra, 1.8 divided by 0.02, we get 90 ohms as our value of the, of the resistor. Now, I put a 100 ohm resistor in there because that's what I happen to have handy. And really, in this type of circuit with this LED, uh, you can use any resistor, probably from 80 ohms up to 200 ohms, and the circuit will work just fine. But as I just showed in the previous clip, I'm using a 100 ohm resistor here. So here's our STM32. Uh, a little while ago, we programmed it so that it would cause this LED to blink. Now I'm going to connect, uh, I'll call this the ground wire from the LED, to pin B12 on the STM32, and then we will control the output of B12 so that whenever B12 goes low, uh, current will flow through the LED and be, uh, it will be synced through B12. Whenever B12 goes high, the voltage uh, will be the same voltage as the rail, so no current will flow through the LED. So, We'll use the uh, same sketch that we had programmed for this, but we'll add a little bit of code in order to cause this LED to blink. So as I just mentioned, we're going to connect the cathode of the LED to pin B12 on the blue pill. Now, B12 is identified as PB12 uh, to the Arduino IDE. So we will be using this identifier in the sketch that we're about to write. So here we have the same blink sketch from earlier in the video, and I'm just gonna add a few lines of code. 
first I add the instructions to make PB12 an output. Then I'll just copy these lines of code. And I'm going to make this blink at a slightly different rate just to have a bit of fun. We'll make this blink at uh, every one second. And we'll make this every 300 milliseconds or 0.3 of a second. So now we have this code set up in order to cause our second LED to blink at these frequencies. Okay, so I'm going to move the programming jumper to that position, hit reset, and then click upload. You wanna see these lights blinking? This says done uploading. Uh, I'll plug in the LED to B12. And you can see that it's already started blinking. Now this is still in the programming position, so I'm gonna move the jumper back to the run position. Otherwise it's gonna lose its code. Hit the reset button. Sorry, my LED is a little bit wonky. There we go. So we've got our two LEDs blinking at the different frequencies. So next I'm going to replace this LED with this numerical display, and I'm gonna make the top segment of the display blink instead of the LED. So numerical displays are pretty easy to understand. They are made up of seven elements which create a number, and then an eighth element which is the decimal point in the display. Each element in the display is actually an LED, which is represented in this circuit diagram. So for element A to light up, we need to have 3.3 volts on the anode of the LED, and pin 7 needs to be connected through a resistor to ground. So this is what we're going to be connecting to our circuit. On the blue pill, we'll have pin B12 connected through a resistor to pin A on the numerical display, and 3.3 volts will be connected to this pin, and the circuit should work just as it did before, except that element A will be blinking instead of that LED. This is the circuit diagram of what I'm about to connect. Okay, now we have this segment of the display blinking instead of this LED. And the next thing I'm gonna do is connect the other segments of the display module to the blue pill, and then change the code on the blue pill to cycle through several numbers on the display. So now I have the circuit updated, and the display is counting from nine to zero, and then it repeats the process. Next, I'll show how I made all of the connections to the blue pill, and I'll show how to update the program on the blue pill. So this is the circuit that was shown in the previous scene. I've connected the seven segment display to the blue pill using the connections you see here. Basically, we have one output for each segment of the display. Uh, I won't go through each and every line, but uh, you can see for example, segment B gets connected to pin B13 on the blue pill. And I just did the same thing for all of the other segments of the uh, display. Uh, I, there's no reason to connect the decimal point uh, for our application, so that is connected to nothing. So go ahead and make all of these connections, and then we'll move on to the update to the code. So here's the code that I used in order to create that countdown display. I'll put this sketch 
into a folder that you can download uh, so you don't have to type in this entire uh, sketch. But I'll also walk through the code just to explain what's going on. Uh, a full description of how to code uh, the STM32 is beyond the scope of this video, but uh, if you've coded Arduinos or anything else, it's of course very similar. So here's how the code works. Basically, at the start of the code, I initialize all of these pins to drive the segments of the, the, of the display. So next there's a subroutine where an if statement is used to drive all of the segments of the display. So for example, if you have the number zero that you want to display, everything is on. Uh, I know it looks a little bit backwards because we're driving these outputs low in order to turn the, the segment of the display on. So in this case, for the number zero, all of the outputs go low except for this except for the middle segment, which goes high. So that will create the number zero. For the number one, all of the uh, outputs go high except for two segments, which create the number one. So that entire subroutine just drives all of the segments of the display. And in the loop, all we're doing is incrementing uh, a number. Uh, it starts out at uh, zero and then goes to number nine uh, and then uh, counts down eight seven six five four three two one zero then there's a delay that controls how fast the numbers change and right now it's at one second here's our circuit all wired up don't forget to put the programming jumper into I'll call that the right position hit the reset button and then within the Arduino IDE we will upload there it's uploading Done uploading. Now let's see if it works. Move the jumper back. There we go. The numbers are changing. Looking good. For the next part of the project, we're going to add the second character to the display. So this is the current state of our circuit, and we're going to change it to this. What I've done is I've connected each pin on each character to each other. So for example, this is the C pin on this character, and this is the C pin on this character, and I've connected them together. And I've done that for all of the segments of the characters, and I've added a 3.3 volt supply to this character as well. Otherwise, the circuit is pretty much the same. Each of the pins drive one segment of the, of the circuit pair through a resistor. So here's the updated circuit on the breadboard. And I didn't change anything in the, in the software. So when I plug it in, both characters should show the same number during the countdown. And next, we'll show how to control each character individually. So this is just a quick review of how an NPN transistor works. And in our case, we're using a TO92 package. So the emitter, or pin 1, is on the left when the flat face of the transmitter is facing you. Pin 2, or the base, is the middle pin. And pin 3 is the right pin on the transistor. Now, a transistor is basically just a switch, so when the base is high, then current is allowed to flow from the collector to the emitter. And when the base goes low, no current is allowed to flow from the collector to the emitter. And in our case, we're using 3.3 volts, so our collector is going to be connected to 3.3 volts. We're going to connect the base to one of the pins on the blue pill, and the emitter is going to be connected to one of the power inputs of each character on the display module. So this is the update to the schematic. I've added two NPN signal transistors to the circuit, and the base of each transmitter 
is connected to an output on the blue pill. So when B11 goes high and B10 is low, then this transistor is on and we can drive the character LEDs on this part of the display. Vice versa, when B11 goes low and B10 goes high, this transistor turns on and we can drive the character in this part of the display. So I had to make a few changes to the code. This code is called countdown to char STM. I'll make this code available in the comment section of this video. So these are the changes I made. I added an integer called digit and I set it to one. So digit one means we're trying to drive the left character. Digit two means we're trying to drive the right character in the display. I added two more outputs. Pin, pin B11 is now an output and pin B10 is now an output. When B11 goes high, we're driving digit one. When pin B10 goes high, we're driving digit two. In the display section of the code, we set pin B11 and B10 high, depending on whether we're trying to uh, drive digit one or digit two. And then finally, down in the loop, uh, I just cut and pasted uh, the previous code. And so what we do is on we first go to digit one and then display whatever the number is. And then we uh, reduce the number by one. Then we go to digit two and we display that number. And then we keep going through the loop. So we'll have the left character of the display show a number. Then it'll switch to the right character and it'll display the next number and so on and so forth. So here's the updated circuit. I've added the two transistors. You can see the 3.3 volts is coming in to the collector on the right side. The middle pin of each transistor goes to the blue pill and the left pin goes to control one of the two characters in the display. So as I mentioned, this is uh, B11 and B10 on the, on the blue pill. Now we're, oh, and I've changed the programming jumper to the programming position. Now we're ready to program. Plug in, reset, programming. You can see we've already started our function, but I'm gonna switch the jumper, switch the jumper, reset, and now the circuit is working as intended. Basically, we've got the countdown still going, but it switches from one character to the other. So nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Of course, this isn't a terribly useful circuit as it is, but it shows how to control the two different characters in the display. So next, I'm going to change the code on the blue pill so that we will count up from zero to 99, and it will appear that both characters are on simultaneously, but what's actually happening in the background is I'll be switching from one character to the other so fast that to the human eye, it appears that both characters are on simultaneously. So let's take a look at how the code changes for this new function in our circuit. Now, I've added an integer, which we call count, this is the value of the count that we want to show in, this, in the display from zero to 99. The other integers are still there. We still need those. Now down in the main loop, here are the changes that we've made. So for example, let's say we wanted to show the number 27 in the display. So the left character we want to show number two and the right character we want to show number seven. So the left character is digit one. We take 27, divide by 10, since this is since num is an integer, the result gets truncated. So 27 divided by 10, we'll put the number two into num. Then we go, we run our subroutine display and it will show number two in digit one. Now there's a delay of 10. This is important because the microcontroller runs so fast, if you don't put a delay in there, it will automatically start on the next operations before the characters have actually had a chance to light up. So 
This delay is necessary just in order to get the LEDs in the display to show. So moving on down, remember we're trying to show the number 27 in the display. So the right character of the display will show number 7. So in the second digit, we need to show the 7. So this operation, this little percent sign, shows the remainder of a division operation. So if our count value is 27, divide by 10, with a remainder of 7, the number 7 goes into num. Now we go back and run our display subroutine, and number 7 will be shown in the right character. Again, we delay 10 milliseconds, and then we move on through the code. Now the way I have the count incrementing is I'm using millis, which is short for milliseconds, and basically that is the time that the microcontroller has been running since you powered up. So this will, uh, every 1000 milliseconds, the count will increment by one. And I didn't put any kind of reset, so after we, we reach 99, it'll kind of go a little bit crazy, but this is just a test circuit, so I'm not worried about that situation. So here's the code. It's called countdown 099 STM. Again, I'll have this code available in the comment section of this video. So let's update the code on the blue pill. I already have the jumper in the program position. Hit reset and program. There we go. I can already see the count is now working. So our code is working well. You can see both characters are on more or less continuously. Uh, I realize in this video it may look like it's flickering, uh, but that's just due to the shutter speed of my video. Um, but uh, in real life, to a human, that looks like it's on uh, continuously. And we're counting from 0 to 99. Next, I'm going to add this vibration sensor to the project. It's basically a little mechanical switch. There's a ball inside of this, inside of this cylinder, and when it rattles, it creates a electrical signal that's uh, picked up by the blue pill, and uh, we'll use that to trigger a count on the display. Now, this little device, it includes a few more components. It includes a comparator and a little potentiometer, which allows you to adjust the sensitivity of the switch so that uh, you can make it so that it uh, triggers when there's even the slightest little tap uh, near it, or you can adjust the potentiometer so that it takes a really good bump in order to create a signal that will be recognized and will cause the display to increment. So now I've connected the sensor, uh, the white wire goes to VCC. I'm going to connect that to 3.3 volts. The black wire goes to ground. Obviously that's the ground wire. And DO is a brown wire and I have that connected to B4 on the blue pill. So we're going to use B4 as an interrupt for the microcontroller. So here's the schematic now. I've added the vibration sensor. I've connected VCC to 3.3 volts, I've connected ground to ground, and the digital output gets connected to B4. Otherwise, the circuit is entirely the same as it was before. We only need to add a few lines of code to the existing sketch in order to get this vibration sensor to trigger our count. The first thing I do is I add uh, this attach interrupt line to the setup portion of the sketch. Basically, I'm saying here, that uh, we're going to use pin B4 as an interrupt and it will trigger on the rising edge of the signal and will run the subroutine up count every time we see the rising edge. Now the rising edge is the signal that's coming in to B4 and uh, the signal is basically going from low to high, low to high, low to high. So every time the signal goes from low to high, that's a rising edge, will run this subroutine called up count. Up count simply just takes the existing value of count and increments it by one. And if count goes over 100, then we reset it to zero. 
down on the main loop, I commented out the previous line of code where we were incrementing count based on the time. And that was really the only change that I made to the main loop. So uh, those are the changes we needed to make. Uh, this sketch I will make available. It's called counter a sensor. And now we're ready to upload this sketch. Okay, so we've got the programming jumper in the programming position. Hit the reset button. And then upload. Uploading. All right, you can see our code is already running and it triggers when the vibration switch feels a vibration. Now we'll talk about why it's triggering so much in just a little bit. Mechanical switches like this typically do not change state instantaneously. The mechanical components actually bounce for a short period of time, and as a result, the signal created by the switch will have many high and low peaks during the switching period. Every time I try to increment the count with the switch, I get dozens of counts instead of a single count. This is a common problem in the electronics world, and generally there are two methods to solve it. First, we could add some hardware to the circuit to debounce the switch. This type of circuit is effective, but I am trying to minimize the circuit complexity of this project. So I went with the second method. That is, I will debounce the switch using the code in the sketch. Basically, when the code detects a rising edge on the interrupt line, all other rising edges are ignored for a short period of time. You will see in my code that I set that no count period to be 1.4 seconds. That seems to be enough time for this vibration sensor to settle into a steady state after each count. Here is the updated code. The name of the sketch is lap counter STM10. This is the final version of the code. It has all the features needed for the rest of this video, including a beeper and a function switch, which we'll add later on. Among other things, this code includes two new variables, last debounce time and debounce delay. These are the two variables that I use to control the debounce feature in the interrupt subroutine called upcount. I don't want to over explain this, but basically within the subroutine, I use the variables to check to see when the last change in the count occurred. And I only allow another increment to occur if more than 1.4 seconds have passed. So let's program this new code to the project and see how it works. So I've updated the code on the blue pill and I've changed the jumper back to the run position, hit the reset button, and now the vibration switch is adequately debounced. It only shows an increment of one each time I tap the, uh, each time I tap the sensor. Also, I added an extra ground line and an extra power line. Uh, my display was flickering a little bit and I found that uh, just wiggling the wires was causing it to give me a little bit of uh, flicker on my display. So adding the power, the extra power line and the extra ground line seemed to uh, resolve that flickering problem on my display. So this is the buzzer that I'm gonna use in this project. It's actually a surface mount buzzer so that it doesn't come with any leads that would plug into a breadboard. So I'm going to solder some leads onto this buzzer so that I can plug it into my breadboard. This buzzer has a corner uh, that's cut at an angle and the contact that's closest to that cutoff corner is the negative side and the contact that's farthest away from the angled corner is the positive side of the buzzer. So I'm going to put a red lead on here and a black lead on here for positive and negative.
There we go. So here's the update to the circuit. Here's the buzzer that I just soldered, and I'm going to drive that buzzer with this transistor. So when B6 goes high, current will flow from the 3.3 volt supply through the transistor to the buzzer and then to ground. Obviously the negative side gets connected to ground. I could have tried to drive the buzzer directly from the blue pill, but I was worried about the current draw required by the buzzer and uh, so instead I used this transistor. That way the blue pill doesn't have to supply so much current in order to make the buzzer work. Also I've added this 10k or 10,000 ohm resistor. It's connected to B7 on the blue pill and it's connected to this switch that I mentioned early in the video. This is a single pole dual throw switch and on one end it's 3.3 uh, volts and the other end is uh, connected to the resistor and B7 on the blue pill. So this is how I control the option on the uh, on the counter as to whether or not the it will increment by one or two. So when the switch is open this resistor pulls B7 low and the software knows to count or increment by one. When I close this switch uh, B7 goes to 3.3 volts and the blue pill says, okay, I'll increment by two for each input from the sensor. Okay, so now the circuit is working as intended. Uh, this switch changes the mode from counting uh, one by one, and I have the beeper working. So the rest of the video is just going to show how to move all of these components onto a printed circuit board like this to make it nice and pretty. Uh, if you don't have a, a printed circuit board like I have here, um, then there's pretty much nothing else to do on this project and we're basically done. So the first thing I'm going to do is solder these 1206 resistors to the circuit board. I'll put 100 ohm resistors for each of the segments of the display and I'll add the 10k resistor for pull down on B7. The reason why I put this, the resistors on first is they're probably the most difficult component to solder to the circuit board. And if you have a bunch of other stuff on the board already, it's difficult to get the soldering iron in and uh, it makes it hard to solder the, the resistor, these little tiny resistors onto the circuit board. So it's a good idea to put these little resistors on the circuit board before the other components. Thank you. 
So next I'm going to check the resistors to make sure I soldered them in okay. Uh, just gonna check the resistance uh, from one point to another. So it looks like I have a cold solder here. Uh, I need to add a little bit more solder to this resistor. Okay, all of my resistors are soldered in place and they look like they're working. So next, I'll solder the blue pill onto the circuit board. And then I'll put this header on here so that I can program the blue pill using the USB to DTL converter. Okay, well, the power comes on. Uh, I'm not gonna do any other checks right now to see if uh, the code is running and all the connections are right. We'll figure that out later. So next I'm gonna add all the other components, including the vibration sensor, the buzzer, the display modules, the transistors, and a couple switches.
I will do one quick check here. I'll plug in the USB to TTL converter. We've got the buzzer installed. We've got its transistor. We have the blue pill with all of the code installed. So when I plug this in, I should at least get the beep. All right, we're looking good. Okay, let's see if it works. Hey, hey, look at that. Right now the circuit is being powered by the USB to TTL converter. There's a little power converter on the board that provides the 3.3 volts to the circuit board. Now, if I'm going to use this circuit in uh, a little box that's going to be next to my swimming pool, then I can't have this thing plugged into a computer. So I'm going to add a couple more components to the circuit. I'm going to add a little battery pack, which will provide 3.3 volts, and a little switch that will uh, serve as a on-off switch for the entire circuit. All right, now we'll add the batteries. All right, we're looking good. Now I can put it in this box. Got my lap counter. We're all done. The project is all finished now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Even if you do not really need a lap counter for your swimming pool, I hope the project inspired you to build your own gadgets that might use some of the same components shown in this video. Have fun!